All right, good morning, or <laughs> whatever. So, uh, why we sold this off? I've tried to film this like four times now, and it's just been getting too long. So I'm gonna try to um, give a summary. If you got any questions, just throw them in the comments, and uh, I'll do my best to answer. Uh, so basically, why we did it, why we sold it, was it just didn't seem to really fit into our lives uh, at the moment. And the big thing is the main goal of our, or the main goal we're pushing towards right now, is building a family home that is a little bigger, a little more suited for our lifestyle here in the mountains and what we're, what we're trying to be after. And it just didn't seem to make much sense. Um, it was kind of obvious a while back that it, was, it wasn't gonna provide much value in actually building the home in the sense of lumber. Um, honestly, two by sixes from Lowe's is a better product than I can create. And it's almost, it uh, really is cheaper than I could create it also. And by the sense of cheaper, you gotta get the logs and you gotta cut it. So when I was cutting for clients, it was pretty much 20 to 25 cents a board foot. Uh, and basically, I've got too much going on. I can't go out logging it. I don't have 100 acres of trees that I can just cut down some trees and get some free logs. And nothing's free by it anyway. <laughs> but um, I can't just do that. So I'd, gotta, I'd have to buy those logs from a logger which for one, I don't really like doing, but for two, it's 25 to 30 cents a board foot. So right off the bat, I'm 50 cents a board foot for rough cut two by sixes. And then you gotta kiln dry it and plane it or deal with rough cut lumber to begin with. And so you're at 50 cents plus a board foot for two by six, whereas I can buy it for about that uh, when you buy more than 10 two by sixes. You know, if you buy a pallet of it, uh, which you certainly need a pretty big quantity uh, when you're building a home, you can get a pretty good price um, for some lumber. You can get them to discount you 15, 20% pretty easily uh, when you're buying a bunch. And I know this from contracting, and it pretty much goes for a lot of building supplies. Uh, when you're making big orders, you can get pretty decent discounts on that stuff. Uh, so as far as two by sixes goes, it just doesn't make sense. And now in our county, they do allow uh, you to use rough cut, untreated, un they don't say ungraded, but they say untreated rough cut lumber if it's your logs. So you would little, they would literally have to be from your property that you'd have to cut. You don't have to cut it yourself, but the logs have to be from your property that you can use. And that lets you bypass the, I think the kiln dried and grading. Um, but there's some discrepancy there as far as the sizing, if it needs to be, let's say, you know, inch and three quarters thick or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I'm not trying to get into that stuff, um, but it complicates things. So the act of buying a log from a logger wouldn't work either. Now you could use it for siding and flooring and that sort of stuff. But again, you know, you can buy siding, especially when you're buying bulk stuff. It's really not that, um, not that expensive in the big scheme of things. Um, especially comparing, you know, factoring in time when I could be working for other people, making so much money per hour per day. Um, it just didn't really seem to make sense that there would be very few cases when I'd be able to use lumber from the sawmill to actually build the house. So anyway, the point is, I did not have any intentions to use the sawmill to build our house. Uh, so at that rate, it's just a business. Well, from a business point of view, I was getting to the point on my hourly rate, I was, I was up to $80 an hour, where I felt like I needed to charge more to make more money. You know, I was coming to the realization and, and I always kinda, my mentality was always kinda start low on my rates and I would inch my way up. And uh, I'd rather have more business at a lower rate than less business at a higher rate. Well, I was inching my way up and 70, 75, 80, I was, I was already noticing clients not call me back and, or, or fewer orders, fewer, fewer uh, work. And I can't blame them, but it was just getting more expensive. So a lot of the clients are, you know, just trying to make everything for as cheap as possible. And it's kind of getting to the point where they can buy stuff for not much more, or in some cases less than what it would cost to pay me to come out and do it. So I can't blame them for it, but from a running a business, 
it was just getting to that point where uh, not necessarily operating cost you know if you were able to run 35 40 hours a week that's different but I wasn't really able to do that it was kind of it was pretty difficult to be able to get that many hours in one week uh, for a number of reasons one just finding the work finding the clients getting them lined up getting full days you know six to eight hour days um, there was just a lot of work there was three to four hour days and you put in you have to go do a site visit or you have to talk to them or however much time get a contact for three hours worth of work so you know charging 80 bucks an hour even having a four hour minimum or something like that um, you know it doesn't that doesn't always work out you just can't get that many hours so it was kind of getting to the point where I needed to charge more money whether that was in setup fees or a higher minimum or higher hourly rates or, or different things like that um, but on the flip side I was already losing work uh, so it was kind of just obvious in this area for me I was kind of between a rock and a hard place there on the flip side I had the contracting work and basically had no issues keeping busy there was plenty of work coming in with that and not to say I was charging more I was actually charging less but there's a lot more work out there when you talk to a client when you do a job when you bid a job you might not get it there's a fewer there's a smaller chance that you're gonna get it but when you get it it's a two-week job it's a two-month job it's a big job whereas the sawmill you've got a high chance of getting it but it's a one-day job you know um, the longest jobs I've ever had were two weeks that was the longest job and that was, it's only been once there's been a handful of jobs three or four that have been five days um, most jobs are six to ten hours so just that's something to keep in mind you pick up a phone call you talk to somebody for 30 minutes you know on average that's an eight-hour job versus the contracting on average that's a two-week job when you talk to somebody um, and you know I'm charging less per hour but then again there's a lot less overhead so not only I'm working I'm able to work more per contact but there's a lot less overhead I've just got the van I've just got my tools which are expensive drill bits and saw blades and all that stuff uh, but they're not anywhere near as expensive as running a sawmill uh, so I was able to keep more for me uh, and it just seemed to fit better with where we're at and there's also a little bit more flexibility with running the sawmill guy calls up hey uh, oh I can only do Saturdays I get it <laughs> but that kills my Saturdays uh, so I was basically working a lot of Saturdays which kind of made made it difficult on family side um, because of that it was hard to keep a keep a schedule for staying home and especially with rains rain kicks in and stuff like that um, whereas the contracting stuff it seemed seemed that I was a little bit more in control over my schedule with that so it just fit better with um, me and us and our business and this area uh, to basically just cut ties with the sawmill and focus on the contracting. And the other thing is I'm trying to kind of take less work and gear towards building our family home. So something had to give. And basically the sawmill was a whatever monthly payment, whatever insurance sitting out there that wasn't getting used full time. And it just didn't make as much sense to continue on with that. And um, you know, no hesitations. I mean, it was a great decision. Don't don't have any problems. Don't regret it one bit. Um, we have already been talking about getting another sawmill, though. Uh, so um, that's not to say we're out of it and and uh, done for good. We're just done for now. Done for that business model and done for now. Uh, so by that means, by that I mean we're done doing that type of work. I will not go back into portable saw milling, that type of work, uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, but mainly kind of just that cost benefit, um, you know, the cost that I'm, I have to charge to make it worthwhile to me versus what I'm able to, uh, to be effective in the marketplace. Now, if I didn't have the contracting work, if I didn't have, uh, um, if I didn't have that to compare it to, it would be a different story. Uh, I happen to have the skills and all the tools and all that stuff and the licensing 
to do that and be successful. And this happens to be an area where it's a retirement kind of area, it's a vacation kind of area. There's a fair amount of people needing needing work, needing remodels, needing maintenance, repairs, uh, little upgrades, you know, stick tongue and groove up here, upgrade your flooring there, tile, whatever, to do your vacation cabins or for your second home, stuff like that. And there's just not that many contractor type people out here. So here, the contracting is a lot more viable. On the flip side, the sawmilling, there's not that many people, there's a lot fewer people that live full time out here and a lot of the ones that do are the farmer types which just doesn't doesn't provide as much volume and those are also the um, they're looking to be as cheap they're, they're looking for the cheaper option so this isn't the guy who had the walnut tree taken down in his front yard and he wants to make some mantles for his house uh, this is the guy that's taken down 20 trees over the last two or three years and just wants to do something good with it and make some two by fours and build a shed out of it with it, which is fine, I get it. But that mentality means that I'm constantly up against a, uh, a dollar figure. Whereas the, the guy with the one tree that wants to make a special mantle because his grandfather planted that tree or, or whatever the situation is, um, he doesn't necessarily care if it's 400 bucks or 600 bucks because he needs that tree turned into a mantle and I'm able to do that. Whereas, you know, the guy with the bunch of logs sitting on the ground and, uh, you know, he's just wanting some cheap two by fours, you know, it ain't no sweat to let them logs sit there and, and rot away or turn into firewood or whatever. Uh, he may or may not need that barn. He's just looking for a cheap alternative. So if it's 400 bucks, yeah, okay, maybe. If it's 600, ah, I don't know. Um, so that kind of just depends on, um, or that, that's kind of a function of our area and the, the type of clientele that are in our area. And nothing wrong with either of those, uh, it's just where it fits in and where we fit in and where we found success and what is the best use of our time. And uh, any rate, so hopefully that may provide some insight into um, your, your own, whatever you're trying to do or, or thinking about doing. Uh, but a lot of that kind of ba basically boils down to market research and trying to figure out uh, what your market is going to allow and what you're going to be, uh, what you can expect. Um, and I can't really tell you how to do that. I can't really give you any answers with that. Uh, but, you know, starting off, hiring a, poor, hiring a sawmill guy in your area would be a good start. So getting some logs and just hiring somebody else and talk to them, you know, see what, see how busy they are, see what they're doing. Obviously you'll see their rates. Uh, so that'd be a great start if you're thinking about getting into this business. Uh, so at any rate, uh, again, sorry if I'm breezed over things. If you've got any specific questions, feel free to throw them in the comments. We'll uh, do our best to answer it. And appreciate you watching and catch you next time.